TLO, what's poppin'? We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, what's this? Just in case we go live and you happen to miss it. This is where all the highlights will be and things of that nature. Uh, we also got the Patreon. Uh... Yeah, we haven't uploaded today, but we watched the video for today. It's even uploaded to Vimeo first, whatever. Uh, this is the merch. Check it out when you got time. And we also got the Discord, man. Links to all of these things are down in the description. Uh, let's watch HMP Prison Interview. Somebody told me to watch this on Patreon. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's see where this is going already. Hey, was this face just? What's your name? My name is Jack Lloyd. How old are you? 26. What are you in for? Section 18, category 1. How long have you been in? I've been in six years. How long have you got left? Six year, eight months. Okay. So, I'm going to get straight to it, mate. How did all this happen? How did you start? I was serving a 10 fire for the cash and transit robbery. Um, I was remanded on that in 2015. And my release date was July 2020. I had eight months left. I was in Skull Keys, Cat C, Coles Jail. And I was transferred to Open Conditions, HMP Subra. And um, I absconded from Open Conditions and was at large for a week. And, uh, you were about to get out. You had Open Conditions and you absconded from it? Like you ran away? What an it! What a tool! <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, that's when I got nicked for the section eighteen, slash into the face. Oh, dude's face is what you did. Okay. Do you feel the court has given you a harsh sentence? Well, in terms of sentencing guidelines, not. I got. I got. I, I was happy with what I got, but in terms of finding me guilty by twelve people and not, I think I've been wrongly convicted. And do you plan to pursue any appeals? No, it's been told it's unappealable because nothing legally went wrong in the trial. So you've got no grounds? No grounds to appeal, no. Do you regret- Buddy had it from here. I'm talking, he lined them up. Any crimes or regret anything at all? Yeah, I just regret getting caught. Why? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not guilty, I'm a but I just regret <coughs> put myself in the position where I was accused of something I didn't do. How did the media portray you? To be honest, unfortunately, the day you were sentencing, Media weren't present in the court, so nothing really made the papers. So I haven't really had them. I, my case, I have really had much media coverage. Oh, well, that's, I guess that's useful for you when you get back out. Keep in mind, I don't condone any of this. Um... Yeah, yeah, but obviously the previous crimes are all accessible to Google. All you got to do is put my name in the location and they all come up. And what's the truth? What do you want to clear up? What do you want to get off your chest? Because I know. When people get convicted of crimes, it's only 10% of the truth is got out. And how did they, how are they even doing this? Not everything is out. And then people like you, Jack, you don't get, you don't get to give your side of the story. I just like to say that, obviously with these, with these young kids out there at the moment and, and, and they're out there trying to prove themselves like I once was, for whatever reason. Obviously not everybody else lives by the same morals and values, so for example, the fucking, the, the kid who I allegedly done, he was a grafter and, and, and you want to make question because these people are out there doing what they're doing and funding their lives in a certain way that they're untouchable and they won't involve the police. But, you know, the lad, the lad that I, I, I allegedly done, he, 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 he made a statement to the police immediately and then a month later went into Ashton Police Station and made a six page statement. Yeah, told on you immediately. Thought he was a part of that life that he wasn't gonna tell, but nope. Yeah, I was a victim of a crime. I done got a buck fifty on me. It was him. <laughs> and he's out there carrying on doing what he's doing to this day. No one's exiling him from where I'm from or not wanting to deal with him. People, people fuck these grasses. You know what I mean? It's, it's like <coughs> people don't want people don't want to give up the lifestyle they're living. And, and the truth of that lifestyle most times is that. Okay, what is a grafter though? Like, what is the definition of a grafter? Is that just a thief? Like, because a grafter is not a gangster, right? 
I'm, I was never really clear on that. If a grafter is not a gangster and you slash a grafter's face and he told on you, he's not a snitch. He's a civilian who likes to steal or cause trouble. He, he's not a gangster. He don't live by that code. He can tell on you. You chose the wrong person, buddy. And I don't condone it. You shouldn't have chose nobody, but that he don't live by that rule. I don't think he's a snitch. You hit a civilian. He ain't even got what the train they've got. Now that's if a grafter is not a gangster. It's all for show, you know what I mean? So to walk in a police station make a statement which should be frowned upon amongst criminals, it ain't really it ain't really looked at that way. These grassings in fashion, people bang around these grasses. Do you feel that times have changed? There's no honor amongst thieves, first of all. Second of all, like I, I don't even does that a code apply to thieves and criminals? I thought it would just apply to you know what I'm saying? Like the gangster part of it. Of course if you go out and do a crime together and you get caught with your co defendant, okay, cool, now you shh but like I just be on my own grafting, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make it by every day. And you hit me in the face with it. You know what I mean? I feel like models and values have gone, aren't they? People don't give a fuck, like I say, do you know what I mean? They're just out there for themselves. And, they, and, and, and once upon a time, your name was everything. Your word and your name was everything. But now people don't don't give a fuck with that. People don't people don't push grasses away from them. They're happy to be around them. They just forget. They just pretend that that's not happened and it ain't happened. How do you know the victim? It's just a local, just a local mucket from, from, from my area. Were you and the victim on good terms? Not at the time, no. But was you previously like, like yeah, yeah, it was cool, yeah. Tell me about him. What was you doing with your mates and stuff? You chill. Now I would say his mates were just some an acquaintance that I knew, and um, obviously for some bizarre reason he, he decided to tell the police that I slashed his face with a flip knife. All right, so what? One See, of I I don't know what a grafter is, man. So I say all that, but I don't really know. Guys, yeah. So what actually happened, bro? What the day, the day, the, the, the of the alleged offence? Yeah. Well, basically, I was, I was, I was on my own, and and, and to keep cut the story short, I went and met him and another acquaintance, um, and I got into a vehicle with the both of them, and allegedly I reached over into the passenger seat where the victim was sat and slashed his face twice. Whoa! So that's quite gruesome. Yeah, yeah. So you backdoored him anyway. So you you essentially snuck him. Like, didn't even, you know, give him a fair chance to defend himself. You was in the back seat, he was in the front seat. You reached up, clink, 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 clink. Man, get the fuck up. Man, stop it. <laughs> was there a lot of blood? Yeah, it was loads of it. Was it a big slash? Yeah, massive one. How many inches? Uh, seven inches and six inches. How did you feel after you did it? I never done it, but I saved his life. I got him to hospital, and this is how he's repaid me by making me fall out of the again. So, who did it then? There's only two of y'all in the car. It's only three, a total of three of y'all in the car. If you ain't do it and he got hit in the face, so are you blaming the other guy then? Because if that's the case, there is reasonable doubt until he pointed you out. Where did it happen, bro? Um, it happened on the Greenwood Close in the line. And so, what, where about are you from? I'm from Joyles, one of the gym, Joyles, yeah. So, what was it like? How messy did it get? Didn't it just that the. Uh, what actually happened is I was I was with the victim, I company with a mutual friend, and we both got out of the car, and there was a third party there, and there was a dispute over the vehicle. And I was there that day to return the key to a vehicle and make my way home. And before I could make my way home, this the person that was on the outside of the car decided to start stabbing at the victim in the face multiple times. I waded in to stop the lab from causing any more damage and pursued the lab because I thought he'd been stabbed in the chest and I thought he needed to get to hospital before he died. And that's what I'd done. I chased him up the street and, and he was crying for his life and his mum and he's wet his pants. And um, obviously, I got him back to the car and I got him to got him to the hospital. So he was pretty nervous and shaking up to wait his pants. Yeah, he was crying for his mum. Yeah. 
So there was no witnesses? No, there was no witnesses at all. I convicted of one person's word alone and at the trial they decided to answer no questions, but I was still found guilty. That seems pretty harsh to me. Yeah. What have you seen since you've been in prison? What scares you? What bullies you? Nothing, nothing really. You've got to be on point, aren't you? You don't where you are, but nothing really scares me. I've been coming to prison since I was 16. Is it true that you... So you sat... So you sat on that bench. You sat... You sat... When they took it to trial, you sat up there and you you cooperated too. Got slashed. Yeah, yeah, that's correct, yeah. So tell me about that, mate. <sighs> Not really much to talk about. Really, I was I was on the, I was on an internal stairwell on F two in Forest Bank and um, two little girls. Basically, one of them bear with me and one of them come at me with a little bleed. Fucking wankers, didn't they? Yeah. Tell me how you overcome most obstacles. You just got to take a step back and get a deep breath and, and assess the situation and, and tackle it head on. So, what do you do on an everyday basis? Nothing at the moment since COVID 19's coming, we're limited to what we can do and what options we have got to do throughout the day. Jack, I'm going to be straight up with you. Do you have a drug problem? No, not at all, no. Do you suffer with mental health? <laughs> not that I know of, no. Can you tell me how you used to wear money? Because you look quite flashy to me, man. Uh, just get looked after. Off I ain't gonna lie, I've never seen this type of tracksuit. Like, this. <laughs> it's like shorts, but not shorts, but. I don't know. What's your biggest weakness? Uh, I've got a good heart. Tell me about yourself. Tell, tell us all about yourself that people don't know. Not really much to say. I've been in prison all my life, unfortunately. Now, since I was 16, on and off, I've not really done much living. Because I've known you for a few months now. We're not really close, but I've seen you about. I mean, you seem like a cool guy. You seem humble. Yeah, that's the best way to be, I think, yeah. I don't know if I trust Jack, man, on the landing. I ain't even gonna lie. After hearing this story, you just backdoored, buddy, allegedly. From the back seat, then hit him with the, you know what I'm saying? You're questionable. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about strange ways? About all the corruption, the screws bringing in drugs. Oh, he's in strange the ways. Screws going in on kids, smashing them all. Tell me what what do you think about that, bro? Are you worried that the screws might come in on you one day? I'm not worried now, but I've been here multiple times, and you know. Obviously, it's, they've got a them views attitude. There's no, there's no, there's no meat in the middle, and obviously, it's a notorious place where they do, yeah, they do smash their head and they do come in, five up and attack and assault inmates, unprovoked. Do you know what I mean? And there's not really much you can do about it because it's at high level. So you know, there is a complaints procedure, but the people that are answering them complaints, the friends of the people that are smashing your head in, so you're in a bit of a, you're in a bit of a situation when you start making formal complaints about members of staff because there's no one really prepared to listen to you. And staff gonna protect staff, right? They were coming on you. Oh yeah, over the years, not in here. Fortunately, not 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 in here, but yeah, multiple times from 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 being working away from the juvenile estate to the obviously the wilds and then as a con, yeah, been a solid pure times off off screws. Tell us about that man time when when they got you in the office. Oh yeah, that Officer Costello used to be a known PL in strange ways. He was known for breaking people's jaws and strangling people and you know all that type of behaviour. And uh, myself and one of my friends have been having a bit of a running joke with a female member of staff on B-Wing in 2017 in strange ways called Miss Lachlan, an Irish lady with blonde hair. And he dropping names and everything. Jack got receipts, boy. Uh, another member of the staff's obviously reported our, our behaviour towards this female member of the staff. And uh, I was called to uh, Mr. Costello's office over the Patrol state when obviously the whole of the jails locked down, no cells could be open, and there was another SO stuck sat on the desk and two current security members of staff that still work here to this day. And uh, basically, Mr. Costello called me to the office and questioned me about what 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 had been going on with myself and Miss Miss Lockwood, and basically said that if if, if it was to continue, he would he would uh, break my arms and snap my thumbs, and um, that's them sort them sort of threats which he, he was capable of doing because you know it's a, it's never a one on one situation with these members of staff in here it's, a, it's always a, a ten on one and that was that yeah fucking Corona's ended up getting a grip of him and he's had to retire from what I've told through ill health so you know karma does 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 come round every now and again and, and deals with these people when they're doing corrupt stuff to karma spun the block on bro. You know, man.
Fucking hell, that must have been a bit scary. Yeah, yeah, it was. I won't, I won't, I won't lie, it was not scary so much. It was just that he he, he had a, he had the upper on me where he could have come in my cell at any time when I wasn't prepared with my trainers on or, or ready to, to, to swing it out. Like, you prepare yourself when, you, when you've got a dispute. See, y'all see when he said not prepared, didn't have my trainers on. That's why I really don't wear sandals outside. That's an automatic, like, <laughs> disadvantage. With other people, he could have come in at night time when he was sleeping, and that's that's how these people in here deal with them, them type of situations. Yeah, so since then, how does staff treat him? I was trying to not speak to him. I've just learned over the years, if you don't engage with them, then you, you, you can't really have a problem with them. And the ones that try and seek you out and draw you out and, and draw you into them situations, I don't, I try not to give them an inch. So, how did they treat you in general then? Day to day, I don't like I say, I don't really engage with them, but. You know, it is a long-winded, everything's long-winded in there and, 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 it's, and, and things don't run smooth like they like. Strange Ways is a place where they want you to have the bare minimum. Okay, well, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm not going to really lie to you. This is a prison-on-prisoner -prisoner interview, and this is better than a lot of the interviews that I'll be watching. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully I'll be, I'll, 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 I'll be out and about doing the thing again, out in the community. If you could say something to your victim, what would you say? You're a dirty grass, mate, and, and you know, I'll have to do five years, four months extra than what I have to do, but you'll labour with that filthy word all your life, and you know, if you ever come here and sat with these people that I'm sat with here now, they would force you to come with paedophiles and child molesters and corrupt police officers, all, all, all the low, low, low scumbags in life. You have to live amongst them people for your duration, your time, or you're in prison. What do you miss the most? I just miss being around my family in it and, and treating people good and, and being generous and being out there living life to the full. So you've done a fair few Christmases in here. Yeah, yeah. It must be hard. Yeah, it's terrible, yeah. Do you have kids? No, no, I don't have no kids. Do you feel safe in prison? Yeah, I think I think obviously you'd be lying if everyone said they feel safe. I don't think that's true in it. You've got to be on point. Obviously, there's always there's always situations that can unravel and I think if you were just walking around with your head in the clouds and you, you didn't have that anxiety in your stomach day to day then obviously things 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 could creep up on you that you're not prepared for. So I could be definitely wrong about the whole grass situation. I don't know. Um I don't know what a grafter is so. when you was last free, how long was you free for? Well technically I wasn't free was I'd have scumbi from open condition so I, I was free, but I shouldn't have been out of prison. I had eight months left to serve. It was a week before it was apprehended and brought back to open conditions, charged with a fresh offence. <laughs> yeah, it's an ill. You didn't lose. Your, you didn't learn your lesson. Okay. How do you survive in jail? In terms of what surviving? How do you like? How do you feed yourself? Do you have like a support network? Yeah, I've got family and friends, and I? But obviously, you know, some people are, aren't fortunate enough to have that. But yeah, I've got a solid structure of people out there that are willing to stand by me and, you know, make my time easier. And, and, and when I get out, I'll be repaying them people. That's fair enough. So, we're coming to the end of the interview now. And is there anything that you want to clear up? Anything you want to get off your chest? Nah, nothing at all. Alright then, well, thank you for... That's a W interview, man. I know I need some things clarified in the comments, so feel free, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notice. Go.